Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of Blackbird's Brew. Happy Thursday, and welcome to our introduction to Imalk. You were going to spend all January getting ourselves all geared up and ready. Imalk is one of my favorite sabbats. Uh, in fact, I think after Yule, it really is. I mean, I am one of those rare witches for whom Samhain is actually my third favorite sabbat. But let's jump right into this and begin with the basics. Uh, it is pronounced Imalk, not Imbalk. And for that, I have the authority of all of the books in my bookcase behind me. Uh, whenever one of the books makes a point to specify the pronunciation, it's always stated that the B is actually is, uh, silent and that it is Imbalk. Now, the reason why Imbalk as a pronunciation is gaining strength is because, quite honestly, fewer and fewer people are reading books. And fewer and fewer of the books that people do bother to read are making uh, less of a serious attempt to teach and to inform. And I think a lot of people just don't consider the pronunciation very important. Uh, another reason for why people lean towards in bulk is because a lot of us are English speakers and we're looking at a uh, an old Celtic word, and we're making a phonetic attempt to pronounce it. And when it comes to older worlds, uh, older words rather, in different languages, uh, well, we're all doing the best we can. Goodness knows I've butchered many a word in my time. And all we can hope for is that the gods aren't cringing too much and recognize that, you know, everyone's heart is in the right place. But moving on from that, Imolk is generally celebrated on February the 2nd, although some traditions uh, do prefer to celebrate it on February 1st. It's just uh, kind of an either-or. Uh, I don't think there's a super strong argument one way or another, uh, but Fe February the 2nd is the most customary, and you know, I personally haven't found a reason why I would need to do something different in my own practice. Uh, but for anyone watching this, of course, that's up for you to decide. Um, sometimes uh, people will use the word Candlemas to refer to Imolk. Candlemas is actually the Christianized celebration that came afterwards. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I tend to uh, veer away from it. That's anytime you have a word that has mass at the end of it, you can probably count on that was a Christianization of a previous pagan celebration. So what does emulk mean? Uh, the literal translation is generally rendered in milk, in the belly, or to cleanse. Now, to be in milk or to be in the belly, that is a reference to sheep and the lambing season and the very beginning of the return of fertility to the land, because we have to remember uh, Wicca is largely a fertility religion. And of course, uh, the agricultural cycle is going to play into a lot of our celebrations, both in the literal sense and also in the spiritual sense. Uh, the theme of cleansing. It actually coincides with our modern day culture in which you know, the beginning of the year, the January and February, it's an often a time when people are trying to turn over a new leaf. You know, they've made New Year resolutions and now uh, some people are making an honest effort to carry those resolutions out. And this is all part of uh, cleansing the spirit as well as uh, cleaning up any other aspect of your life. Anything that you're wanting to change, this is part of that cleansing. Now, while we are still very much in winter during Amalk, Amalk is actually considered to be the first spring festival. It has the first whispers of the season to come, much like uh, Lunasa is the first whisper of fall, even though we're still in the middle of heat at that time of year. And of course, during Amalk, we're still in the middle of the cold, but it's starting to move a particular direction. Now, uh... Along with that is that uh, there are some hardy plants, you know, in some areas at least, that are making their very first appearance. That's why snowdrops are have such strong associations with the sabbat. And again, as aforementioned, sheep are beginning to have their babies. And gardeners, you know, they're planting their first seeds indoors, you know, in their little trays, you know, with little heat lamps and, you know, other protective measures in case you have cats, because, you know, you don't want the cats messing with them. Uh, but everyone's getting ready. We're getting ready to put things into the ground. We're ready for life to start coming back. We're ready for the weather to get warm enough and for us to emerge from our own personal hibernation, get back into the world, and start doing things. Amalk is also a fire festival. So bonfires, rekindled hearth flames, having a multitude of lit candles. Uh, it's very customary in modern ritual, and it's just a fun besides. Now at Yule, we celebrated the return of the sun, but by the time Amalk arrives, that returning light is finally noticeable, at least it is in most areas. And if it's not in your area yet, I am so sorry, please hang in there. The sun will come back, I promise. 
But uh, embracing the light and uh, making use of more light and making use of fire in our celebrations, it symbolizes the sun regaining its strength. And again, that brings up the hope of the warmth will return. The earth will come back to life. Life will go on. We will go on. And that's a pretty important aspect of renewal. Now for the spiritual significance of Amalk, between Yule and Amalk, we've had time to absorb the impact of the previous year. We've had time to reflect. We've had time to begin writing our next chapter and deciding what we want that chapter to consist of. Now, as with all pagan holidays, uh, the energy of the Amalk season infuses both magical and mundane aspects of our lives. So it's time for a fresh start and to fully embrace the new. And this has implications for our everyday life as well as our spiritual practice. The question becomes... How do we want to use this energy to best effect? We know that energy is available. We know we will be using it one way or another. We'll know we'll be affected by it, whether we're deliberately seeking it out or we're just taking it in through osmosis. But so it's just, what do we want to do? How do we want to make the most of it? Now, obviously, uh, this is going to be very personal. Uh, no one can answer that question for anybody else. And as far as, you know, what we need, what we want, the lines along which we're personally evolving, uh, this is also something that doesn't remain static from year to year, and it's not something that can really be charted by someone else. Um, if we're entering a new life stage, as maybe someone is attaining adulthood, or someone's getting married, or someone had a baby, they started a business, uh, they started a new relationship with a god and it turned into patronage, uh, pick any major life event we might be experiencing, and which you can clearly divide it, you know, before this happened and after this happened, and it will have a huge impact on what a mulk will mean to you on a particular year. About uh, maybe you've had a quieter time uh, and during these you know kind of lulls in between the storms in our lives in which we haven't uh, had a significant alteration in our circumstances or we haven't reached a different life stage a mulk might be more about the celebration of the season itself rather than a reflection of what's going on with us personally it might be seeking renewal to continue walking on our chosen path getting a little bit more energy and a little bit more momentum for doing so but no matter uh, which category we're broadly in it is time to plant seeds to nurture for the year to come now lastly, I want to point out that there is absolutely no separating Amalk from the goddess Bridget. Her mythology, her powers, personal characteristics, they just embody the ideas of transformation and new beginnings, which is one of the many reasons why she's associated with Amalk and why it's considered to be her feast today. Now, of course, not all Wiccans and not all pagans work with the Celtic pantheon, obviously, uh, and many may work with other deities uh, who represent renewal at this particular time. However, Imolk itself is in honor of Bridget, even if you're not working with that particular goddess. You know, the original meaning is all wrapped up in her. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't uh, select someone suitable from the pantheon you do work with who also reflects those, uh, those themes and to really focus on them. It's just more so of understanding where this came from. Everything else is just adaptation. Now, speaking of uh, the goddess's powers, her... Her main focuses are, of course, with fire, with water, with agriculture, with the home, as well as being a very skilled shapeshifter. And, of course, all of these traits gives us a, a myriad of ways in which we can approach Bridget and show her honor during the Amalk season. So, depending on what this year's Amalk really is meaning for you in your life, uh, you can choose which aspect of this uh, goddess that you want to work with. Unless, of course, she has other ideas and uh, decides to lead you in a different direction, in which case, uh, off you go. That's, that's pretty much what you'll be doing. But as long as uh, she's allowing you to continue to uh, chart this interaction, uh, you can approach her um, in reference to different, I suppose, offices that she holds. Uh, of course, if you're feeling stuck and you just can't see a way around your circumstances or you're, you're not really knowing... How to chart a court f uh, course forward just because everything is so chaotic and everything's so unsettled and you just don't know what's going to happen. You're not even sure of the ground underneath your feet. Uh, what you can do is you can actually approach Bridget and ask for her direction, ask for a lesson in transformation, learning to see opportunities, learning to reclaim your own sovereignty because she is associated with sovereignty amongst other things. She is a goddess of the land. So she can be very helpful to us if we're just not sure what direction we should go or which direction we can go. 
Now, uh, with activities, uh, one of the things we can do in the lead up to a malk is to light a candle every evening in the 19 days prior to the celebration in honor of this goddess. And of course, we could take that a step further. And during those 19 days, we can also engage in some deeper meditation, make special offerings to Bridget, uh, do little mini rituals each day as part of building ourselves up. Now, the reason for the 19 is because at her her temple in Kildare, uh, she had 19 main priestesses, so that is where the 19 comes from. And of course, this is just an introduction to a malk. We've got a lot more to go into as the month of January progresses, and then of course on the day itself, uh, there will be a proper video. But I just want to whet the appetite, get you thinking about a little things, and start thinking about how to use this time. Um, I'm I'm just really getting focused on on the doing of the things, not just passively accepting what's handing out to us, but being more proactive, charting our own course, pursuing our destinies, and actually taking charge of our own spirituality. So if you have thoughts about that, especially when it comes to the doing, I'd love to hear about them. Uh, you're very welcome to visit me on Discord at Blackbird's Brew. There's a link to join in the description box below. And of course, you can always leave a comment on this video and then subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and uh, I guess that's it, and I will see you next time. Bye.